Hi, my name is Dave Gabry, and I'm the director here at Bullet Central. If you have called in and asked questions about any of our products recently, we've probably chatted on the phone. And one of the questions I get asked a lot are, is about some of the different features that are available on our bat actions. And uh, we thought it'd be a great idea to do this video to actually show you what some of the different features are so that you can make a better decision on which action is right for you. The features that we're going to talk about today, I'm dividing up into three different categories. The first category being features related to the action body. Second category will be features related to the bolt body. And the third category is general features for the entire action. So for features related to the action body, the first uh, option that you have is what kind of steel the action is made out of and your choices on the bat actions are either stainless steel or chromoly. Stainless steel of course gives you corrosion resistance. Uh, stainless steel is also a little bit easier to machine and you get a really beautiful finish on a stainless steel action. Chromoly is the other option. Uh, chromoly is something that you can put a blued finish on so if you're looking for a blued finish then chromoly would be a great option for you. While we're on the topic of finishes, there are a variety of finishes that you can get on your bat action. And if you get a stainless steel action, one of the options that you have is just a polished finish like this. It's a very uh, popular finish, looks great, um, and a lot of people just go with a polished finish like this. One of the concerns people have with stainless steel is that uh, it does tend to gall a little bit more easily than chromoly does. Uh, it's not a problem if you keep it well lubricated, but sometimes if they're dry or dirty, there is a concern for galling on the action. So another option for a finish is to go with a melanite finish like this. Not only gives you a different look, but it also hardens the surface so it's much more resistant to galling. So it's a uh, cosmetic and a very functional finish. Um, melanite or otherwise known as nitride finish uh, will show some wear, some surface wear, but the, uh, the hardness that it gives to the receiver is permanent and you always get that benefit of resisting galling. One more option that you have for finishes on the bat action is a bead blasted finish like this. It gives the receiver a, a dull finish, which uh, may be cosmetically appealing to you or just the anti-reflective nature of it may be interesting to you for whatever shooting sport that you're using it in. Uh, the final option, as I mentioned, is a blued finish and that is available on any of the Chrome Molly receivers. The next option that you have when you're picking out a bat ac action is to determine the general shape of the action body. And they're available in round, octagon, or what bat refers to as a multi-flat action, which has more flat surfaces than the octagon shape does. Now, these shapes do not affect the functionality at all. They're uh, purely a matter of personal preference. Um, the bat actions that I shoot are round. Uh, but I talked to some people that love the octagon action uh, and some people wouldn't have one. So it's just a matter of what you like and uh, what, you're, what you're trying to make your rifle look like. The uh, multi-flat action is typically a 1.4 inch diameter action for, for most of the standard size actions. They do get larger. And the round action is generally available in 1.35 inch or 1.55 inch depending on what size barrel that you're going to put on the action. And the octagon action is typically a 1.4 inch action uh, until you get into some of the larger bat models. The next option that you have when you're picking out a bat action is to determine what configuration you want the ports on your action. And there are three uh, options available from bat. The first, which is available in the VR and HR models, is a bottom feed type of action. And this is what you would find in most hunting rifles where the rounds are fed in 
from the bottom either through an integral magazine or detachable box magazine and as you work the action the empties are ejected out the side. Uh, this type of action is best for a hunting rifle if you want to have multiple rounds loaded in the gun or if you're just comfortable with a hunting style setup where the rounds are fed through the bottom and ejected out the side. The next kind of configuration that BAT offers is a single shot type of action where you have a single port and the rounds are fed through that port and ejected through the same port. Uh, some people um, who are, are doing shooting sports such, such as bench rests only need a single shot action so they only need a single port and they're most, most comfortable doing everything from one side of the action. The final configuration is what BAT refers to as a dual port action. And here you've got a port where the empties are ejecting and you've got a port on the other side where you're feeding in new rounds. So it is a single shot action, but you're feeding rounds in with one hand and after you fire, they're ejecting out the other side through the ejection port. The key thing to, to notice here is that the ejection port on these bad actions is normally smaller than the feed port. And it's important that you pick an action where the size of the ejection port is large enough for the brass in whatever caliber you're shooting. Once you've selected the features for your action body, there's another set of features related to the bolt body that BAT lets you select. And the first one that I'd like to talk about is fluting on the bolt body. The basic bolt body option would be no fluting at all. So here you see completely flat surface on the bolt body. The second option that BAT offers is called diamond fluting. And here the flutes are cut in both directions, giving you a diamond pattern on the bolt. Very flashy looking. If you want to build a flashy looking gun, this is probably the fluting that you want on there. And uh, I personally like it. I've got, I've got that on a couple of my bad actions. The third type of fluting that bad offers is straight fluting, where you've got flute cuts just down the bolt body. No twist to them at all. And the last option that BAT offers is called spiral fluting. And here the flutes are cut in a spiral down the length of the bolt. These uh, fluting options really don't change the functionality of the bolt at all. It's mostly cosmetic, whatever you're looking for. The one difference that they do make though is it does change the weight of the bolt slightly. Not a lot, but a little bit. And if weight is a critical option for you, then fluting is a way that you can address that. Uh, a diamond flute like this pattern removes the most material from the bolt and therefore gives you the heaviest bolt, excuse me, the lightest bolt. The heaviest bolt would be no fluting at all. So those are the four options that you have for fluting on your bolt body. The next feature that you can select when you're choosing your options for a bad action has to do with the bolt face. And there are really three options here for you to decide on when you're picking out your bolt. One is the diameter of the bolt face. One is whether it has an ejector or not. And the third is the style of the extractor. The bolt face on pretty much uh, all of the bat models can be selected either as 223 uh, PPC bolt face, which is used for a six millimeter PPC, the PPC slash BR bolt face, which is typically used for calibers like six millimeter BR or six millimeter Dasher, uh, 308 bolt face, a Magnum bolt face, the 338 Lapua bolt face, or the large 50 BMG bolt face. So those options determine the diameter of the bolt face and that limits what calibers that you can shoot in that action. The ejector is an option whether you have one or not. Uh, most of the actions that we sell do have an ejector but occasionally you may find shooters who are shooting off of a bench and they're worried about the cases being ejected onto the ground or they shoot from a 
prone position and they don't want the cases to be ejected into the, uh, into the dirt, they may select to not have an ejector on their bolt face. And then the extractor, this particular model here has a Seiko style extractor uh, and that's common on some of the smaller calibers, a lot of the uh, PPC bolt faces or the PPC slash BR bolt faces will use a Seiko extractor. And we can compare that here to a model that has a 308 bolt face, so that's the diameter uh, the bolt face, it does have an ejector, and this has what BAT calls their sliding plate extractor. Where here the plate just slides in and out. Uh, it is a little bit stronger style extractor than the Seiko extractor and typically gets used on larger caliber uh, bolts. So those are the three options that you have when selecting the bolt face, the diameter of the bolt face, whether it has an ejector or not, and what type of extractor that it has. The last option that you have for selecting the type of bolt body that you want is the knob on the handle. And the standard knob handle looks like this. It's uh, fairly round and compact and it's actually machined as part of, of the handle. The other option BAT calls their tactical knob and you can see that it's much larger, it's teardrop shaped with a flat bottom and it is screwed on to the bolt handle. Uh, the tactical knob, uh, people choose them sometimes because they like the look or they may choose if they're shooting a, a tactical or action style shooting where they want to, to work the bolt very quickly it may be easier for them to grab. So, Standard knob or tactical knob are the two choices that you have. Okay, so we are on to the third group of options that you have for a bat action, and these are options that apply to the action as a whole. And the first thing that I want to talk about is mounting systems for mounting optics on your action. And bat gives you three options. Uh, the first option is just grilled and tapped for you to put your own type of mount there. So any type of scope mount that you like, uh, regardless of what it is, uh, whatever your preference, you can mount it directly onto the action just by screwing it in to the drilled and tapped holes. The second option that BAT gives you is their integral rail. In this case, the rail is actually machined as part of the action. Uh, you can see that it really gives it a finished look the rail comes nicely out to the front and the back of the action. Uh, it's very seamless. Uh, the advantage is you never have to worry about this rail coming loose. It is always affixed to the action. Uh, the one disadvantage is you're locked into a particular angle for that, that rail. Uh, BAT makes these rails available in zero or 20 MOA uh, slope to them. So if you get an integral rail, you will be locked into whichever option you pick there. The last option that BAT makes available is a detachable rail, which from the side is going to look pretty much like your integral rail, but you'll see from the top that it is screwed into the action, and that allows you to change this at any time. If you want to switch back and forth between a 0 MOA and a 20 MOA rail, you can do that with the detachable rail option. So three options for mounting optics on your action. The last option that I want to talk about with these bad actions are recoil lugs. And um, the purpose of a recoil lug is to help transfer the recoil energy from the action into the stock and not put it directly just on the mounting bolts or on the glue if it's a glued in action. And BAT gives you three options for recoil lugs. The first option, which is generally used on the smaller actions for smaller cartridges, is actually just an inset cut out into the bottom of the action. And then when the stock is properly inset so that the stock fits inside this cutout, that gives you additional friction between the action and the stock to help keep it in place when recoil is put on that action. So that's just a, a cutout style uh, recoil lug. 
The second type of recoil lug that BAT has available is a detachable or bolt-on lug. And for this lug, a slot is cut in the bottom of the action and then a lug is fit inside and you'll see that the lug hangs down from the action waves. That lets you inlet the stock by that amount and drop the lug into the stock, giving you a firm grip between the action and the stock. And then the final, action, the final option for recoil lug is BAT's integral recoil lug, which, which is actually machined into the front of the receiver. And like, uh, like a recoil lug that you would find on a Remington action, uh, it hangs down right at the front of the receiver and would also drop into a slot that is inlet in your stock. And this is manufactured so that it would fit in typical sort of inletting that you would find on Remington compatible stocks. So here again, you got a firm grip between the action and the stock and that helps transfer your recoil energy into the stock rather than relying just on the mounting bolts for the action. So that's our overview of the options available to you when you try and configure a bat action to meet your particular needs. We're very excited to carry these bat actions. They are in high demand, they're extremely well machined, very close tolerances and really second to none on the market. So uh, we've got them in stock. Give us a call or send email and we will configure something to meet your particular needs. I'm Dave Gabry from Bullet Central. Thanks for watching.